In this session, we're going to talk about some basic functions of Audacity. So you may be familiar with some of these tools at the top. If you mouse over them, they'll tell you what they are used for, such as the play button, the record button, uh, stop button, and pause button. We're going to start this by clicking on the record, and this will actually record my voice. Once I'm finished, I'm going to click the stop. So you should see an audio track listed on the page. So maybe you want to record some notes and give them back to your students or um, possibly some other, um, this would be a useful tool. You can adjust the volume levels here for the uh, output and also the microphone uh, input. So you can uh, change those levels here. You'll see the meter being displayed here of what, what those levels are. If your headset is not recording, if it's not picking up your voice, you may want to m double check the drop down menu here where um, we're next to the microphone. You may have to change your settings. It, it might be that your computer is not picking up your headset or uh, your built in mic. So you might have to change that. I had to change mine to the Logitech USB headset, which is the headset that I'm using. So once you have your file in Audacity, we can add some effects. Simply click on the Effect tab at the top, and you'll see there's a, a long list of different effects that you can apply. Most of them might be advanced features, uh, but for today we're going to cover just a, a few of the basics. So one of the first things you want to do, if you wanted to, to let's say we want to add a fade in, I would highlight the section you wanted to fade, so you'll see that there's a, a second counter here, so I'm, I'm I'm capturing just under one second. I'm going to click on Effect, then Fade In. You will see that your sound file changes and will will give you a nice fade in. You may want to do that for a fade out as well. So um, I'm going to highlight the last section here, click on Effect, and Fade Out, and that'll just give you a nice clean beginning and ending. Maybe you noticed that you coughed in the middle of your section, or maybe you wanted to delete some some blank space. You could highlight the section you want to remove and simply hit the backspace backspace or delete key to remove that section. Maybe you noticed something that you wanted to replace. You recorded something uh, in the past and you want to replace a slide. You wanted to update it. Highlight that slide and hit the delete key. Sim similar to what we just did. It's possible you want to move your sound files around so another way to do this if you wanted to switch orders of things is you can highlight copy things out. Um, one way to do this if you had a specific section out of here is you can move your cursor, just simply click on the timeline on a Macintosh computer, hit the command I key to put a split, then double click and you can highlight that section. Once that's highlighted you can hit on your keyboard control C to copy it or you can hit control X to cut. I hit control X move my cursor over and I'm going to hit control V command V to paste. Maybe you noticed you recorded the audio low. Maybe it was too low, it wasn't a, a good connection, your microphone was too low, you didn't want to re-record it. You can actually try and boost the audio, you can amplify the audio with some effects. So highlight the whole thing if you wanted to. Click on effect and then amplify. This gives you the decibel level before the audio will break up. You can change that level if you wanted to back it off a little bit. I like to back it off a little bit, um, maybe drop it down a few. Um, usually upping the audio by just a few decibels is good enough, but that depends on the, on the quality of the audio. The more you amplify your sound, the bigger chance that you're going to have uh, static and other background noise being picked up that you don't want. So amplifying a small amount is usually best. You'll see that your sound file changed and it amplified just a little bit. And if you played that, you can always do a preview and it'll play a sample of that file. There's many other effects that you can apply to your sound file. Um, you know, some other things that get a little bit more advanced if you wanted to do a, no a noise removal. Um, that there's some other features in here. Um, that um, may be of interest to you. Uh, feel free to create a test file and play around with it. 
once you're done adding your effects, you're going to want to export the file. Uh, the most common file format for audio is MP3. To do so, click on your file menu, select export audio, pick your place where you'd like to export it. I'm going to leave it as the, the default. My computer defaults to the desktop. I'm going to put a name for my file. Make sure my format says MP3 files and save. The next step you'll notice it's add asking for metadata. These are options you don't have to input any information into the metadata fields. Uh, but if, for instance, you would like to put the artist name, maybe this is your lecture and you want to make you're going to put this out on the web, you may want to put in your name for the artist artist name, uh, maybe the year or the gen genre, like uh, spoken or anything like that. Or maybe this is an audio file, a, a sound file. Maybe you're creating a a sample music file. You could you could put in the artist name, track title, maybe the album title, the year, genre, so on and so forth. But again, these are options. You can leave them blank. For this particular file, I'm going to leave it blank and click OK. Because this is such a short file, it, it processes pretty quick, but that will run a process and you've just created an MP3 file. In turn, you can also import files. So if you already have an, uh, an MP3 file, we mentioned before if you had a file that you recorded previously and you wanted to edit, you can import files by clicking on File, Import, or just File Open. That tends to work pretty well for me. File Open, pick your file, select your desktop or wherever your file may be. Maybe it's in your music folder. Select your file, open it, and you'll have a, a new file here. And again, you can apply the same effects to any, any file that you would like. Before you close Audacity on a Mac, you may want to consider keeping the Audacity link in your dock. So by doing so, you would right click on your Audacity link or command click under options keep in dock that will keep it in the in the docking station and make it much easier for you to find your copy of audacity